What's up, Sled Gang? So almost two years ago, I discovered this channel called Geography Now, and that's the channel that does a video about every single country in alphabetical order. The first video I watched was actually about the country that I'm going to tomorrow, but you'll find out what that is in my next video. At first, I didn't realize it was in alphabetical order, so I was looking for the Palau episode, and eventually I figured it out. And then I also figured out that they're a little bit slow with these country episodes. So then I'm like, okay, hopefully it'll be out by like late 2018, early 2019. Well. I was a little bit wrong on that because it just came out two days ago, July 31st, but better late than never, right? But I figured this is such an important moment, it's such an important milestone that I need to react to the video. I mean, I'm the Palau guy, right? My hair sucks. Let's just jump into it. All right, Palau. Wow, that's a really good start to the video. I already like it. If you want the quick summary, once upon a time there was a custody battle with a child between the yeah, US and Japan, but also the Philippines too, kind of. Yet for some reason, Spain and Germany were arguing, yet the baby yeah, I should probably move over so that you can like get the, the video in the corner. Was technically descended from Taiwan, who had no claim over it, yet gave them a lot of money because they didn't want China to I get too I don't know about that one, And Chief. they make great barbecue. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Ah, I love Oceania, the world's least talked about and explored region. Palau? That's true. The nation that's just starting to make its debut on the vacation getaway list. I hope not, because I want to go there before all the annoying tourists show up. Palau has gone through so much chaos and yet is still kind of lucky. Lucky in the sense that unlike their other Micronesian cousins, geographically they kind of have a sweet spot close to the major land masses. For one, the country is located between- Yeah, I, I don't know about that. It's, it's still pretty far away from anything. The Philippine Sea and the North Pacific. It is essentially the furthest- I mean, wh why do you think no one discovered them for like- a long time. It is made up of over 340 islands, some say as much as 500 if you include smaller rocks and islets, the largest one being Babeldaob Island, which- That is not how I thought that was pronounced. Holds the capital, Melakeok, or Narulmud, yeah that's how you pronounce it. That, also not how I thought that was pronounced. I've been saying narrow mood for like two years now. Which is the least populated capital in the world with only about 400- There we go. The capital building though. You can also find the largest- Okay, you guys want to see something? Where's my computer? Okay, look at this. The Capitol building is actually my computer background. Fun fact. Nonetheless, the largest city is Koror, which is on a separate island, just south of Babeldaob, which is where most of the commerce and action happens. It would have been nice to mention that that's like over half the population, but it's okay. Country is further divided into 16 states, each with their own little flag. Don't forget these little- Oh wow, every state has their own flag, who would have thought? Islands way down south, known as the Southwest Islands, also belonging to them as well. The Hatoho Bay State is the furthest one, made up of Tobi and the Helen Reef, the southernmost point nearly 400 miles or 640 kilometers from Babeldaob. Populated by only about 43 people, making it the least populous first level administration. Okay, I'm glad he mentioned that, but every single state, like one of the states is like 13,000 people, and then the rest of them only have a couple hundred. I don't know why there's states at all. It's just that it's too small of a country to have 16 different states, but that's just my opinion. In the I mean, it's not like I have any say, except uh, the president of Palau's nephew actually watches my channel, so um, maybe, maybe I do have a say. However, at about 68 kilometers or 38 miles, Babeldaob Island is the only one with an extensive roadway network that goes all the way to Konle, the northernmost point of the country, crossing over into Koror via the koror Babeldaob Bridge. I, I've made a joke about that bridge in a video. See if you can find it. Okay, I'll show it. Fine, whatever. So let's just take a random bridge, for example. Uh, how about the one between the two main islands of Palau? Here's what it looks like normally, and here's what it would have looked like if our group designed it. Whereas two other islands, Mayungs and Malakal, are also connected via bridge. Speaking of Palau's geographic uniqueness, it's also important to note that just like when- I, I hear the word uniqueness, and it totally means something else, because I've been at debate camp for the last two weeks. Mentioned in the Marshall Islands and Federated States of Micronesia episodes, Palau is the third and final compact free association- Hey, there we go, there we go. What is compact free association? No, okay, we've, we've already gone through this. I, I've talked about what a compact free association is in my own Palau history video. To the countries that have funded or invested in them. The bridge was built by the Japanese, the capital was built by the Taiwanese, but inspired by Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. The list goes on. Otherwise, I talked to some of you guys, the Palau and Geography peeps. Yes, we have people from Palau that watch this show. And many of you- Hey, same. People don't think so, but that there are real Palauans that watch this channel. You gave me a list of notable places to check out in case if you decide to visit, such as the National Museum. No, I already know all this. I already know all this. Milky Way, Rock Islands. I've still never been. I don't want to watch this part because it just makes me sad. Let's go swimming with some non-poisonous jellyfish, no, shall we? I want to go there so bad. Yeah, they have a cool lake with non-poisonous jellyfish. Stop talking to about it. With. It's like one of their top tourist destinations. However, due to overcrowding, the government limits visits to avoid harming the fragile ecosystem. <laughs> It's already happening. I need to go right now because they're already starting to 
like block people from going. And that's the thing, Palau is a front runner in oceanic conservation efforts. About 60% of its marine area- That's good. They're standing up to Trump right there. As volcanic activity forged the islands we see today in a long, wispy, speckled archipelago following the large Babeldaob Island, which is the second largest island in Micronesia after Guam. Most of the country is lush and green with tropical vegetation. Most volcanic activity is extinct today, and the tallest point, Mount Norellus, lies on Babeldaob. In fact- I'm pretty sure that's just a hill, honestly. Babeldaob, of course, has all the other extreme physical points, like the largest Lake, Lake Nardok, what a the largest name. freshwater lake in Micronesia. There are many small rivers and streams that cross the country. Okay, just, just side note. It's not related to what he just said, but who thought it was a good idea to have NG at the beginning of like half of the words in this language? Cave I'm trying to skip everything that makes me really want to go there because I don't want to think about it because I'm going to a different country tomorrow. The nation's exclusive economic zone extends even further to about 200,000 square miles or over half a million square kilometers of ocean about the- Honestly, that's kind of crazy. I mean, what are they even using that for? The size of France. In 2009, the government signed over about 80% of oh, which there to go. become a marine reserve and the world's first shark sanctuary. Oh, and keep in mind that they are generally outside of the typhoon zone and don't usually get hit with them. The largest one was Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. Another reason Palau is better. But it only did like a little damage damage to some houses and there are no fatalities or major injuries reported. Alright, so that's just about it. It's time for my triple shot of espresso break, which means it's time for Noah. Oh my and... god, here we go. I always love the special effects. My turn. There are about 150 species of bird found in Palau, including the national animal, the fruit dove, over 1,300 species of fish and- That is a cool fish. 700 species of coral. In terms of mammals, there are less than 20 species, most of which are water mammals like dugongs and whales. Otherwise, on land, they have three main bat species, including the endemic large plow flying fox Never heard and the crab eating macaque. I'm learning so many Economically new speaking, they are relatively better off than most Pacific Island nations, as True. the third wealthiest Another reason Palau is better. nation by GDP per capita in Oceania after Australia and New Zealand. The nation depends heavily on three main sectors subsistence agriculture, fishing, fishing and tourism. most important one, tourism. I which in itself makes about 80% of the GDP. Thanks to the various blessed diving spots and white sand beaches, Palau has become an international hotspot for visitors abroad, over 80% of whom come from either Japan, Taiwan, and the US. This employs about three quarters- What about China? Are they just not gonna mention that whole thing? Yeah, never mind. ...of the workforce through the service sector. The problem is there are more people coming in than the entire population of Palau, which in return has caused a strain on the people's rush to sustain and accommodate in the long run, as well as avoid environmental damage. This has caused the government to take action in things like instigating a visa policy, limiting the amount of flights and visitors, as well as access to certain islands. Well, I'm from the U.S., which means I'm pretty sure I can just go there without a visa. Compact to free association, gang. Otherwise, everyone's favorite, food. Now in Palau, the staple you can find with many dishes would most fish. likely be either taro, yams, or tapioca cooked in various ways. And oh. of course, fish. Oh, we there asked we go. you guys. And of course, many Western and Asian dishes that permeated the mainstream gastronomy. You can find sushi, burgers, and pizza oh, everywhere yeah. as well. Regardless of all the outside influence, the Palauan people have stuck close to their roots and built a nation that is specifically theirs. Which brings us to... No, not an ad. Oh my god. Heart rate's 120, BP's 140 over 90. I can skip the ad? Okay, yeah, I can skip the ad. Hectic first day. But earning my now, Palau is strange. It's like a kind of American-y, Japanese-y hybrid Micronesian confusion fest with some Filipinos sprinkled in for good luck. It's interesting to see how over time they kind of grew into what they are now. First of all, the country only has about 22,000 people. Oh, they're gonna make it look like the flag. Called that I called it. With. The majority of people speak either Palauan or English. There are five official languages, including Sansoro and... I like that picture just because it has the flag. Tobian, spoken by about 600 people on the two islands of Sonsorol and Also, Tobi. And the they're last gonna mention one, Japanese. Japanese, there we go. believe it or not. No way. Yep, it's actually only official on the island of Angwar, making it the only place outside of Japan in which Japanese is an official language up to the state level. I already knew that. It has 10 consonants and 6 vowels. And nobody even knows exactly where the language came from. Like, it's kind of Micronesian, but not exactly. The C- True, and it's not even on Google Translate either. The CH is just a glottal stop. <laughs> CH. It makes no sound. And the NG sometimes sounds like an N. And there sometimes a hidden vowel comes out of nowhere, even if it isn't written, it's confusing. Oh, now, my what? camera's overheating. Gotta, gotta uh, take a break. Great, now my camera's gonna run out of battery. Let, let's try this, see if we can make it through the last six minutes of the video. Exactly makes a Palauan a Palauan. Well, being from Palau, that's my guess. First of all, they are part of the broader Micronesian ethnic group, along with their siblings, the Marshallese, Micronesians, Guamians, and Mariana Islanders. Let's put it this way if the Pacific Islands were a family, Palau and Guam would kind of be like the better off. That, that, that looks like a Raphael from Jane the Virgin.
RIP 2014 through 2019. When no, it's not the per, it's the show, not not the actual actor. Never mind. Lucky, outgoing, more connected uncles. They have access to international business, whereas their cousins are a little more reserved and less engaging. That's now, true. despite the obvious influence from outside forces like the USA and Japan, Palau still has retained its traditions and customs. And with that, here's Random Hannah with culture stuff. Look, most societies are matrilineal, following inheritance. Made matriarchal, but yeah, this guy has a pretty good voice for this. I'm not gonna lie. Through the mother's side. <laughs> Thank you. The Yap stones we discussed in the Micronesian yeah. episode were often carved and shipped out from Palau. Some other aspects of Palauan culture include things like being heavy chewers of betel nut. They have a first. That's a drug. I don't know if they mentioned that, but. Baseball is the most commonly played sport. There were uh, that makes me want to start playing baseball again. But numerous Micronesian game titles, and they were the champions of the 2007 Pacific Games in baseball. Most Palauans are here to. A Another reason Palau is better. What's wrong with Keith? He's a Gators fan. Keith Musk is my uh, sports, I don't get it. Okay. Because there are really no intellectual property laws or restrictions. Originally, stick dances and percussion were and still are common, especially during events. In terms of mainstream modern... How are you going to copyright stick music? And now history, in the quickest way I can put it. Oh, Austronesian sailors, it, say most say likely it. indigenous from Taiwan say and Papua it. New Guinea, come in. They mix together. Captain Henry Wilson shipwrecks oh, on say Kulon it, say Island. It, say it. Europeans come in. They didn't mention the part about how when he shipwrecked on the island, the locals ate him. Goes to England but dies of smallpox. British give islands to Spain, introducing Catholicism. Spain sells it to Germany. Japan invades and takes over in World War II. U.S. comes in and fights off Japanese. They become a trust territory of the U.S. 1994 Compact Free Association with the U.S. and Independence. And there we go. It's missing so much, but if you guys want to a shameless plug. If you guys want to see the full history of Palau, I recommend watching my video called Palau History Lesson. I posted it uh, last year on their Independence Day. <sighs> Update, my camera ran out of battery, so I went downstairs to get a snack, but let's continue. I think they're about to get to famous people. Some famous people you guys suggested we mention include people- I better be on here, I'm just saying. Like Prince Lee Bu- I mean, I'm not, I'm not from Palau, but I'm famous in Palau. So, Harul Remalik, Gabriela Nirman, Guniwo Nakamura, Lisa Sande, Lazarus Sali, Peoria Koshib. You you know this is a very small country when the famous people are like former presidents. Steve, Patrice, Noah Eteo, Yubi Misia, Kisha Noel Keen, and Kendall Titimel. All right, that just about sums up this segment. Wait, wait hold on a Misia. second. YouTuber, I have almost as many subscribers as this person. Why am I not on here? Now we need to pull out through the last segment of this episode. That was an awful joke. Now, Palau may be small, but they have an interesting way of reaching out to the world. A lot of people seem to want to come. I.e., uh, China takes advantage of them, and they said no, so that's why they're special. If Sled Gangistan isn't mentioned on here, this is just this just wrong. I mean, and they love each If you don't get that, then don't, just don't bother. Each other. Every so often, they also visit each other as well. Taiwan, on the other hand, is one of the few countries that they recognize as opposed to... Taiwan is real China. China. They give lots of medical and education assistance to Palau that allows Palauans to study in Taiwan. They also have a patient referral program. You know, I'm pretty sure uh, because of that, China actually banned tourists from going to Palau because they won't recognize them. Maybe Palau should join the Belt and Road Initiative and then they'd be happy. They, they'd allow their tourists to go there again. Treatment in Taiwan. Taiwan also kind of acts as like a shield that fends off the waves of Chinese investors and overwhelming yeah. tourists that flock in. For their best friends though, most might say either Japan or the USA. Yeah. It's kind of like a weird joint custody battle that both have between the country. It's the US. This video is just trying to make Japan feel better, but it's the US. I mean, we literally like created Palau. No cap. What happened in World War II, but they quickly moved on. The U.S. is kind of like the stepfather that took them in and gave them lots of resources and stepfather, opportunities. Stepfather, that's good. And also gave them a lot of potential to manage themselves as a small country. Japan is... Yeah, uh, that's code for... It's kind of a neo-colony. And will always be, though, close to their hearts. They are the second largest donor after the U.S. The emperor and his wife visited in 2015. They love nice, Japanese food that. and culture. The two nations share the same time zone. And overall... Oh, it's over. <laughs> they share the same time zone. Wow. Well, even after colonial times, they've had close ties. In conclusion, Palau is kind of like the interesting offshoot Micronesian that kind of speaks a little bit of Japanese and they're trying to fend off the massive waves of tourists to maintain their natural beauty. Wow. Palau. Stay tuned, Panama. No, okay, that's great. No one, I think they should just do a whole nother Palau episode, honestly. That one is not enough. <sighs> so in conclusion, wait, he already did the in conclusion thing, never mind. That was really, really good. I, I made a lot of sarcastic jokes, but it was really good. The only thing that they could have mentioned was me. I mean, that's, that's really it. I'm sure they'll find out about me eventually, but I think at the point where the president of Palau's nephew has seen my videos and also commented, that's how I know. 
Uh, I think that I'm I'm, I'm kind of notable in the country. I can't wait to go there, honestly. And you know, as usual, I gotta ask Tommy Romangasaw, can I get those free tickets? If his nephew's watching this, I, I really hope he can hook me up.